Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter again. So we're going to do a three-month back-to-work video. And I'll be assisted by my friendly, faithful sidekick, Crash the Wonderbird. Don't make jokes about killing birds with stones. He doesn't find that funny. Did you? No, you didn't, did you? No, I know. So, as of the 31st of March, I would have been back to work for three months. Um, now... The first two weeks, I only work three hours a day. The second two weeks, I work four hours a day. The fifth week, I work five hours a day. The sixth week, I work six hours. Seventh week, I work seventh. By the eighth week, I was working eight-hour days. Uh, the month of March, I worked eight-hour days throughout the entire month. So let's just talk about what it's been like now working one month of actual full-time hours and then three months of being back to work so statistically I'm actually not doing bad uh, so to speak um, now I work in a call center so my calls get quality or audited right um, regularly so far all my qualities have been I think 90 90% or higher um, month one, I was in quartile one of about a four, so I was in the highest one. Month two again, and the last time I looked at any stats for my set, my third month, I was in Q2. Now, that being said, um, I was in Q2 for the beginning of the month, and then after an air horn went off at work, I fucked up my brain. I dipped into Q4, meaning last place. Uh, I've now fought, struggled, and got myself back up to Q2. So... I'm going to call this month a win. Uh, um, Airhorn actually went off twice at work this month. Um, still waiting for my um, proper actual purpose-built noise-canceling headset. I'm told that might show up next week. I don't know. When it shows up, it shows up. Um, it, it'll show up eventually, and then that'll be a good thing. Um, but there, buddy. So... What have I learned in three months of going back to work? I'll be honest. I kind of question if I was ready at six months to go back. I still question that. But the neurologist basically said, well, there's no neurological reason why you can't be at work. I'm like, okay, you're the expert. I'll defer to that. I probably should have waited longer. I probably should have spaced out my return to work plan, like should have done maybe longer number of weeks. Um, I probably probably should have done a lot of things differently, maybe. But then again, I've never had to do this before. Um, the last job I had in mental health, I was assisting people that had brain injuries, be they acquired or traumatic. Um, never really had to help someone with a return to work plan. I was with a student in grade 7 and grade 8 for a while. Actually, most of grade 7 and most of grade 8. Actually, yeah, so I can appreciate how that would be similar, but different in a way. Because um, in grade 7 and grade 8, you're not really expected to be productive, per se. You know, like, um, you can't get fired from grade 7 and grade 8. Um, there are days at work that are still extremely difficult. Uh, I still have days where ambient noise can just play shenanigans on my brain. Uh, air horns definitively do not help. Um, I'm hoping that won't happen again. We'll see. Um, I can still get confused at times. There was an instant instance, sorry, on Thursday. Where the past couple of days at work, I've seen someone at work and I'm like, I know that person. Like, I know, I think I know them. I'm not sure if I know them or not. Then I heard them speak and I'm like, fuck, I know who they are. But I don't remember you. Right? And it's kind of awkward to walk up to someone and say, hey, I, uh... Well, eventually I was able to encounter that individual and I said, hey, listen, I know this is going to sound just absolutely ridiculous, but do I know you? Right? It turns out I did. Uh... I realized that that conversation might have been very awkward. 
uh, for both of us. <laughs> um, but it was just nagging on me for like the last week and a half. It's like, I know that person. Turns out that person is a training manager from the training department. I've interacted with that individual many times. Um, I still don't remember them completely. Uh, it's just better to now be able to put a face to the name, right? So that still happens. Uh, and I'll be honest, there's probably a quarter of the people at work. I don't know who they are. Like legit, don't remember your name. Don't remember what department you work in. I know I probably should know you, but I'm not walking up to every single individual going, hey, who are you and who are you? I'm not, I'm not doing that. It, there's no need for that. Um, one, it would get ridiculously awkward. Two, it's just, I don't feel the need. Right? I don't feel the need to walk up to, you know, 150 people and go, who the fuck are you? How do I know you? Do I know you? What's your name? I, I don't have the need to that. There may be limited instances where I may need to do that. But I don't see the need. So let's see what happens. Um, I get to find out in a week or two if I get to be a trainer still. I'm hoping I'm still able to be a trainer. I don't know yet. Um, I was told I have to wait until I've been back to work for three months before we can have that conversation. We'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, it's been, there have been very difficult days. Uh, there are days where I come home physically and mentally just exhausted. Like, the only thing that, you know, like, I will come home so physically spent uh, that, you know, cereal, toast, and bed is pretty much the order of the day. Um, there are days where I come home so physically spent, I, um, bed is pretty much an almost immediate occurrence. So, it is difficult at times, it is very difficult at times. But yet, then again, some days are ridiculously easy. I still have problems with things that are incongruent. Um, I've had uh, I've had a conversation with a couple of my coworkers. Uh, they've said a few things, and I'm like, I, I don't know what you mean by that. I don't I don't understand that. Like, explain it. And then they kind of explain, like, still still don't get it. You know. And it's not me trying to be obtuse or be difficult. Um, it's just what you're saying. I don't understand. Right. So I need you to re-explain that differently. So it, it can be difficult. There are days there are days where I still have difficulty and it's obvious. It's it's incredibly totally terribly obvious. There are days where um I don't have difficulty. Right? Now have I considered asking for a, like a, my own private cubicle, which is away from everybody else. I have. I don't think we need to get to that yet. We'll just see what the noise canceling headset does, and then we'll move from there, right? Um, I don't think that'll ever need to be an option. It is an option I may have to pursue, let's be honest here, uh, in order to be successful, because just the ambient noise is just too much at times. Um, I may need to do that. It, it, it's awkward, right? Um, I, I know there are still people at work that are keeping their distance. Um, they're not sure what to say or what not to say. Um, it is what it is. Um, I can't do much about it. I mean, unfortunately, unless you've had a stroke or a brain injury, you're not going to get it. You're not going to understand the fact that, you know, I get easily confused or I have mobility problems some days and I don't have mobility problems other days. Um, you're not going to understand that there are days where ambient noise is just a huge, huge issue on my brain. And other days it's not so bad. You're not going to understand the fact that, you know, people just randomly yelling is disheveling on my brain. You're not going to understand the fact that there are times where I'm going to forget your name. 
um, you're not going to understand the fact that there are so many things going on at times. Me just maintaining focus on a 9 to 12 minute phone call is all I can do to stay at work. Right? And people that have not had to have a stroke or have a brain injury, they're like, well, you just go to work and sit down. Yeah, yeah, it, it is that simple. You just go to work and sit down and you wait for your customer to call in and you answer their concerns and you deal with their problems, right? That's easy, right? Now, throw in, I've actually forgotten words on phone calls. I have started to stutter on phone calls. I have had, um, uh, you know, had to had to tell a customer more than once, you know, I'm not trying to be difficult right now. It's just I can't think of the word I need to say, and it's because of a neurological injury that I have. Um, you know, trying to tone out everything around you and dedicate your entire focus to that one phone call. Uh, there are days where it feels like I'm putting in three to five times the amount of effort I used to be able to put into doing my job for half of the outcome. Um, there are days where I come to work exhausted, physically and mentally exhausted. And that's because I've been up since two in the morning. I've had a couple of those nights in the last month where, you know, I'm showing up to work and people go, hey, you look tired. I'm like, yes. Are you okay? I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to give you the road answer. I'm fine. Like, I'm fine. Right? Um, because I'm just going to be honest here. I know you don't have the ability to understand what I'm about to say. Right? Um, and it's easier for me just to say to you that I'm fine and yes, I'm tired than attempt to explain it to you because I'm just going to be honest. I know you don't have the intellectual capacity to actually understand what I'm going to say without trying to placate me with fucking platitudes. I, I just know that's the case, right? Oh, it'll get better. No, it won't. Oh, just, just motor through. Yep. That's what I do every fucking day, you know? So, um, there are days where I just tell people I'm fine because I know they're not going to be able to understand what I'm about to say next. So it's easier not to have that conversation. That's just the reality of the matter. Um, you know, You'll get people like, oh, I have headaches too. Yeah, you may have headaches. You don't have a headache like I do. Oh, it must be the weather. No, you're just an idiot. Um, you know, I know they mean well. I, I really appreciate the fact that they mean well. I just would rather they just accept the fact that they have no clue what they're talking about and just admit they don't know what they're talking about than try to placate me with platitudes or some form of like, oh, I have this. I'm like, just, that just proves as soon as you just try to relate yourself to me, you're not actually understanding or even listening to what I'm saying. That's just how that works. So, been back to work for three months. Some days are easy. Some days aren't. Uh, some days are better. Some days aren't. I, I appreciate that if you've had a stroke, you may be watching this and you're a little bit jealous because I have the ability to go back to work. Um, I appreciate that you're watching this and you're wondering, well, when will they let me go back to work? I know going back to work is a huge thing. I know going back to work is part of your self identity. I know going back to work is part of your sense of self worth. I know going back to work is the last step that you perceive it in your recovery journey that, you know, I need to go back to work and be productive and, get off the insurance or get off um, uh, the pension plan the government has me on or get off if you're in the state, social security, you know, whatever the case may be. I realize that there are some people that are never going back to work. I get that, right? Um, I know I'm lucky and, and, and I try to let people know that I know that I'm lucky. I also appreciate the fact that Some days, although I'm lucky, um, they're not easy. And I, I try not to take out my bad days on other people. You know, even though I'm having a complete shit day at work, I try to keep smiling. As, as, as hard as that might be, I try to keep a smile on and, and um, just be, you know, happy-go-lucky as best I can fake it. Because some days I truly have to. 
And if you're currently wondering what he is up to, he has decided that it's right now time to pluck the hairs out of my fingers. So that's why you keep seeing his tail go up in the air. Kind of like that. Anyways, if you like what you've been watching over the last nine months, uh, please like, share, subscribe with your friends. If you've enjoyed the content, please like, share, subscribe with your friends. Uh, if you know someone that's either going through their own post-stroke journey, either you're going through your own post-stroke journey, or you know someone that's supporting someone going through a post-stroke journey, please like, share, subscribe. Hit the little bell icon so you get the little dingy, dingy, dingy when videos get uploaded. Uh, and if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being someone appears to be immediately befuddled or confused, they don't have a sense of balance, they don't know where they are, uh, someone has vision problems, they see in grayscale, they only see one an eye, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, they only see it like a little window of the world. Uh, someone who appears to have facial droop, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all, someone who's having slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, um, someone who... Uh, uh, has general body weakness or weakness on one side, has the inability to stand unaided, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.